just want to uplift the saints, so let's ride. Let's ride. If the most high on your side, who gon' fight against you? Trust and believe that the spirit in your spirit. Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. Nobody turn you from your friends, you can save them. I hope you know this child looking down, he gon' save them. He gon' save us all. Been through it too since you ain't all alone. I done been through. 
only know you can do all things through Christ. Yeah. He gonna give you the strength. Help renew your mind. I'm not telling you no fairy tale. I'm really living this life. I'm just a servant for Christ. Trying to help you the right. How am I not commanding you to be strong and courageous? Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. Don't let nobody turn you from this truth you can make. Don't let nobody turn you from your friends you can save them.
need some men and some women that's going to stand for righteousness. He needs talking. He needs some men and some women. Need women that's going to be faithful to one man. Need men that's going to be faithful to one woman. His eyes running to and fro through the earth. Looking for some righteous people. Looking for some women. That ain't going to let no, if they marry, ain't going to let no other man look at them or touch them. for some men that ain't gonna be out here looking at other women. That's what he's looking for right now. Looking for some righteous people. Somebody gonna care about your damn money. You done lost your damn mind. You can take your damn money and shove it. I preach the word of God. You give if you want to give. If you don't, go down there and spend it at the crack house. I don't give a damn. But don't ever disrespect me like I give a damn about your money. You'll never see me on here begging for damn money for myself. Everything I do is for the nation. Got people out there right now living on 40 acres, off grid, with their own well, own cows, own chickens, and they don't pay a damn dime. How about that? Living free in Zion. That's what this ministry do. So, now tell me, what have you done for your people? What have you done for your people? I'm a Hebrew Israelite. 
I'm not part of no religion. We don't follow religion. You know, God got some grown men on this earth that don't follow other men, but know how to follow God. So if you part of religion, you ain't nothing but a follower. You, know, you, you too weak to follow God for yourself. So you follow men. That's why you claim religion. Because you're too damn weak to serve God on your own. So you got like the false prophets, you got to run in packs. Elijah was by himself. Elijah was by himself. Elijah didn't need no group. Elijah didn't need no bunch of men. Serve God all by himself. Don't need no religion. Go get down on my knees by myself. Get up by myself. Go give an account to God in the end by myself. Talk to God on my front yard by myself. There's a few of us left. You know what I'm talking about? There's a few women and men on the earth that serve God just like that. They don't need church. They don't need religion. Talking to God and 
God be talking to him. Come out of those religions and get a relationship with God like your mama. You came to the right channel. I look just like your mama. You're on the right channel, baby. You on the right channel. America's in the process of collapsing. Get your water. Get your food put up. I know that the Holy Ghost done spoke to you and told you to get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Everybody put another eight in here. If you heard the Holy Ghost telling you to get ready, get ready, get ready. Come on out of here. Put an eight in here. If you heard God, if you heard God telling you to get ready, get ready. Get ready. Close the door, Aaron. Close the door. And let the death angel pass. Ow! Close the door. Close the door and let the death angel pass. again. Come on out of here. Don't get me fired up this morning. Don't get me fired up this morning. Everybody, everybody know they got the blood of Christ over their house. Put a number eight in here. Everybody house sanctified. Put a number eight in here. Everybody who don't tolerate mess at their house because your house is where you serve God, put a number eight in it. Put a number eight. 
weed in here if they can't smoke dope at your house. Put a number eight in here if they can't act the fool at your house. Put a number eight in here if you got your house in order. Put a number eight in here if your house waiting on the key. Put a number eight in here if you ready for the key. Are you ready? your house ready. Close the door in and let that death angel pass. He said, take a lamb. He said, take a lamb and drain that blood and take that blood and put it over the door of every house that's a Hebrew. And those Egyptians said, let me in. The Egyptians said, they said, let me in. I know I'm an Egyptian, but I want to go with you. Can you let me in? And they opened up the door. They let the Egyptians in. Those that wanted to go. You better hear me talking. Egyptians said, I'm going with you. We getting the hell out of ancient Egypt. We go, I'm going with you. Come on out of here. That's what the Gentiles saying right now. They said, we going with you. We we ain't going to hell. They can, they can keep America. I'm I'm I know who the chosen people are. I'm, I'm going to get linked up with the right people because I'm going to the kingdom. I'm going to be grafted in. Come on out of here. I'm going to be grafted in. That's what the Gentiles say right now. You ain't leaving me behind. You ain't leaving me in this wicked place. You ain't leaving me in this ungodly place. I'm going with you. And I'm going to say to the Gentiles, come on, get in here, media troop, get in here, and let's go. We're coming out of Egypt. Oh, yes, we are. Man, we separating ourselves. We ain't playing no game. We know what time it is. Man, time ain't no game. Man, it's about over. I said it's about over. Man, take your wife in hand. Man, get your children in hand. Boy, we about out of here. I'm telling you, we about out of here. Time is on our side. Getting us ready for the most high. Somebody, ain't nobody mad. Ain't nobody mad king of now. But the devil and his children. Oh, they the only one mad. They better kiss their butt and get glad. <laughs> Put the blood. Took that blood of that lamb. Put it over the doorpost. They put it over the doorpost. Yes, they did. Put that blood over that door post. Yes, they did. All you can hear when they closed that door, they heard crying. They heard nothing but crying. Egyptians started dying. All of the firstborn in ancient Egypt. All 
of the firstborn. Is anybody on here hearing me? He got rid of all of the firstborn. Of our enemies. See, we ain't going to do nothing. We ain't fighting. We's going to sit in the house and have a glass of wine. Our ancestors didn't fight to live ancient Egypt. I'm going to have a glass of wine in my hand. By the first bar of Egypt are being put to death by God. Close the door, man. We're non-violent people. We don't have to fight for ourselves. Our God fights for us. And you know that. Only people on the earth whose God fights for them is the God of the Hebrews great. There's no God but the Hebrew God. Eat on that. The deliverer. He said, Vengeance is mine. I shall repay, says the Lord. Only God in the universe that will come down and fight for his people. See, we don't have to fight for our life. Our life fights for us. The only people on the whole planet whose God fights for them That's what separates our God from all the other gods. And over there in the Apocrypha, at one time, the whole world knew it. At one time, the whole world knew it. What did he say? That it was noise to broad. That because the Hebrews kept God's laws, they had their God to fight for them. Come on out of here. We ain't going out here. We ain't got to put no bomb on. We ain't got to go out here and hurt nobody. Because that's against our law. That's against our law. So all we're going to do, sit back and watch with our own two eyes. Psalms 91, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thy dwelling. That's what we're going to do. Put me a chair right there in my window. Put me a chair right there in my window. Like the old neighbors back in the day just sit there at their window. And if you touch their grass, get out my grass! I'm put me a chair right there in my window. A thousand shall fall at thy side. And 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh your house. Thousands 
shall fall at thy side, 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh your house. Close the door, Aaron. Close the door, Aaron. Close the door, Aaron. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. Under the shadow of the Almighty, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh your house. <laughs> you come on this channel you better be ready to get some scripture you good baby somebody look at somebody and say you safe baby you safe Get your pencil and get your paper. Much love. Welcome to a channel where we teach the word of God as it is written. 
First Thessalonians 5 21. Is that first? Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. And abstain from the appearance of evil. First time. All praises. Well, since we got a lot of first timers, let's start off with. Isaiah. Much love, Texas. 28, 9 and 10. We ain't gonna leave nobody behind. Isaiah, 28. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Question mark. Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. This is how you're supposed to read the Bible. But in the Christian church, they treated the Bible like it was a Harlequin novel. They treated the Bible as if it was an ordinary book. But when God said, here a little, and there a little, God is telling you that the Bible is a puzzle. And that the Bible can only be understood by those who have humbled themselves, repented, been baptized, and received the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is how God wrote the Bible. So in order to be able to understand God's language, you got to have the Spirit of God to understand God's word. Without the spirit of God, you cannot understand the word. That's why so many people out here today are trying to, they speaking for God. No, I'm a servant of God. God's going to speak. Let me show you. Give me Psalms 119, 142. Let's apply precept upon precept. Line upon line. Let's do it. Give me Psalms 119, 142. What's up, DK TV? Much love to everybody. We're running out of time. If you have not been baptized the correct way, it's time to find some water. It's time to get in there. It's time to take on the name of Christ. Psalms 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Now, when Christ spoke, he spoke from the knowledge of the whole Bible. So he already knew Psalms 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. Write that down. Give me John 8, 32. Now Christ is speaking from the knowledge of the whole Bible. When he quotes John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All right? If you don't know Psalms 119, 142, you can make that truth out to be whatever you decide you want it to be. 
But when you stay in the word of God, it can explain itself. Now that you have the knowledge of Psalms 119, 142, now we're going to reread John 8, 32, and in its proper context. Now that you know that the law is the truth. Now when you go back to John 8, 32, we're going to read it in his proper context. And you shall know the law, and the law shall make you free. Free from who? The devil. Give me John 8.44. The devil is the lawless one. So when I keep the law, it protects me from the devil. If I have no knowledge that I should not live in fornication, Satan gonna eat me alive because I'm gonna stay in fornication. If I have no knowledge of not committing adultery, then Satan gonna eat me alive because I'm gonna be out there committing adultery. If I'm not supposed to be, if I have no knowledge, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the law, because there is no law in him. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is the father of it. Did you see that? The Bible just spoke for itself. Some million dollar views. Much love to everybody that come on this channel. All I ask is for respect. Did you see that? The Bible can interpret itself. But we've been in a system where men been telling you what it's saying. No, it can speak for itself. Give me the 10 versions. Give me the 10 versions. It was 10 virgins. All of them had what? Lamps. Only five of them had what? Oil. You know that oil represents its symbolism. What did they do in the Old Testament to receive the Holy Spirit? What did they do? They had to take the what? anointing oil and anointed them what once they got anointed they became what priests and what kings so anytime you see in your bible where they got oil that oil represents the holy spirit king david nathan had to take the what oil and anoint who? King David. What happened? The Spirit of God came on him. Saul, at the beginning, what happened? Aaron, his sons, the anointing oil, like this. It's symbolism. For the Holy Spirit. Extra virgin olive oil is what? Pure. What is it? A healing agent. So the ten virgins. They had lamps, right? Give me that. Was it is that Psalms? Six and twenty-three. Where is that at? Come on, church. I don't want to use my brain right now. <laughs> the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. The commandment is what? A lamp. And the law is what? Light. The commandment, watch the Bible explain itself. The commandment is a lamp and the law 
is what? Light. Proverbs 6.23, the commandment is a what? Left. What did the ten virgins have in their hands? What did the ten virgins have in their hands? So the, cat, the lamps were symbolism for the what? The commandments. They had five of them had oil, which represented the Holy Spirit. Five was wise, five was foolish. Five had the commandments, and they did like the Pharisees and the scribes. Did the Pharisees and the scribes have the commandments? But the Pharisees and the scribes, they refused to get water baptized. The Pharisees and the scribes, they rejected John's baptism. And John in Matthew 3, John said that there is one that cometh after me who's mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to loose. He got a baptism to baptize you with, with fire and with the Holy Ghost. So they got the Holy Ghost, the ones that had the oil, got the Holy Spirit. The other five only had the commandments. They were messianic maniacs. <laughs> All right. Everybody that's on here right now, that's a Gentile. Put a number five in here. I'm about to bless your day. That's right. Everybody that's a Gentile, put a number five in here. Get your pencil and get your paper. Get your pencil and get your paper. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Revelations 21. Start at verse 12. Talking about the new heaven and the new earth. And it had a great wall, a great and high, and had a wall, great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels and the names written thereof which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of israel one on each on the east three gates on the north three gates on the south three gates and on the west three gates What's the name on the city? The name of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Their names 
are the address for the new heaven and the new earth. Now, where does the Gentiles come in? How are the Gentiles going to walk in one of these gates that's named after the 12 tribes of the children of Israel? Because there is no gate right here that says Gentile gate. That's right, Rock, y'all. So where are the Gentiles coming in at? Go to Isaiah 40, Ezekiel 47 and 20. Yet baptism is one, but what tribe are they coming in at? It's something the Gentiles got to know. Ezekiel 47 and 21. Write these down. Let's start at 20. The west side also shall be the great sea from the border till a man cover oh, come over against Hamath. This is the west side. So shall you divide this land unto you according to the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that you shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you and, and, and to the strangers that shall join among you which shall beget children among you and they shall be unto you as one born in the country among the children of Israel. They shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that in what tribe the stranger shall join it, there shall you give him his inheritance, says the Lord God. So, Gentiles, on this channel, I am an Ephraimite from the tribe of Ephraim. The stick of Joseph in the hand of Ephraim. Give me doctrines and covenants. 27 and 5. If you're coming under this covering, you're coming in under the tribe of Ephraim. Give me doctrines and covenants, 27 and 5. Behold, this is wisdom in me, and wherefore marvel not for the hour coming that I will drink of the fruit of the vine with you on the earth and with Moroni, whom I have sent unto you to reveal the Book of Mormon containing the fullness of my everlasting gospel, to whom I have committed the keys of the record of the state of Ephraim. What is it? It is the records of the ten tribes. Whose hand is it in? Ephraim. 
Why is it in Ephraim's hand? Because it's Ephraim's records. The Bible is the records of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Give me Give me Isaiah 49 and 6. You no longer consider the Gentile in the eyes of God. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. It's our job to bring back Acts 10.35. You are part of the tribe of Ephraim. We got Ephraim on this channel. We got Manasseh on this channel. We got people come on here from Asher. But because I'm the head, you sit under this covering. Got Gad, got all of these tribes. But you sit under the covering of the head of Ephraim. Yes, when I just read on the east three gates, each gate has one of the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Ephraim has a gate, Judah has a gate, Benjamin has a gate, Levi is going to come in with Judah. They are the priests that work hand in hand with Judah. Asher got a gate. Dan, Dan is also going to come in like Gentiles. Dan is now going to come back with the Gentiles. Manasseh got a gate. Benjamin got a gate. It's the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Now in Isaiah 49 and 6. Go to Acts 9.15. Acts 9.15. But the Lord said unto him, talking about Paul, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Right here, put Isaiah 49 and 6. Take and put Acts 9.15 next to Isaiah 49 and 6. Those are your precepts. This is why we was raised up. We were supposed to teach the whole world. This is why in Romans chapter 3, we were given the oracles of God. We were supposed to be the teachers of the whole world. 
we were supposed to bring people to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So if I ask the question today, do you serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? What would you say? Much every way, chiefly, because unto them were committed the oracles of God. The oracles of God were given to the Hebrews. No other nation. That's why the world is in the, in the mess that it's in now. You can't look at the world and not take responsibility for it being in the condition it's in because our ancestors were supposed to teach them, but instead we wanted to be like them. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Now, I know you guys, you done been out there and you done listened to all that false doctrine coming from Hebrews and get you confused because you come to this channel and you actually get the word of God given to you. So you come over here and you say, oh my God, there's a Hebrew that's teaching the word of God as it is written. So when you come over here, you, you get tripped out. Because I give you the Bible as it is written. We don't add to it, and we don't take away. Go with me. But what I found out is that a lot of us, when you went to school, you was taught how to read. But you wasn't taught how to comprehend what you read. And that's the majority of the earth. Everybody, put a number five in here. If you had a class called Reading and Comprehension. If you didn't, put a number eight in here. If you didn't have a class called Reading and Comprehension, put a number eight in here. A lot of these schools taught you guys how to read, but they didn't teach you how to comprehend what you read. All right, we're going to apply reading comprehension. Go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 7. You got to go along with me. Starting at verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Parasites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. Stop. Everybody highlight those names. Highlight those names. Now remember, our knowledge has increased. We got the other ancient records. So our knowledge 
has increased. Everybody that's only got the Bible, they don't have a clue why God is going to say what he's about to say. So we got, we got the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, no sure mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall thou shalt not give unto his son, neither his daughters shalt thou take unto thy son, for they will turn away thy son from following me. Stop. Everybody got them names? Everybody got them names? You got them names? I'm going to show you why God said don't marry these people. Now we have a higher knowledge. We're going to learn something. Go to chapter 14 and verse 11, page 113. Now we're going to know why God said don't marry these people. Why would God say don't marry these people when God created these people? All you got to do now is use common sense. Just use common sense. Why did God say, don't marry these people when God created these people? What happened? This channel ain't for the stupid. What happened? He made them. He created them. Now why would he say don't get involved in marriages with these people? Because these people will turn you away from me. What happened? What happened to Judah's two sons, Onan and Earth? Judah took him a Canaanite prostitute, and he had two children. What God said, they was wicked. What God do, God killed them. Say right here, God and Satan is at war. Satan know Christ got to come through a pure bloodline. So all throughout your Old Testament, Satan 
is trying to contaminate the bloodline. That's why he enticed King David to kill Uriah and take Bathsheba. That's why the first baby body had to be disposed of because it was created in sin and Christ could not come through David through that child because that child was conceived in sin. So throughout your whole Old Testament, there is a physical and spiritual war going on to contaminate the righteous bloodline. So now, because we have a higher knowledge, let's read verse 11. And God said, obviously, I have saved the affliction of my people in the land of Egypt. And I heard their cry because of the oppression of those who forced them to work, just like today. For I know their pains. And for this reason, I am coming down to deliver my people of the oppressive hand of Pharaoh and lead them to a good and spacious land a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites and of the Hittites and of the Amorites and of the Perizzites and of the Hivites and of the Jebusites. These are those tribes who have been infected in your progeny by Anakil and his rebellious angels before they were all thrown into prison when they made a pact with Satan on Mount Hermon just after the waters of the flood to dry. For this reason, I will exterminate the seed of the tribes that dwell in the land of your inheritance. Stop. What land they living in? The Americas. What land are they living in? The Americas. Remember, Satan said, I shall be like God. So what did Satan do? Satan got a head start on God. And he put his children in our land. You see it? This is the Americas. This is the promised land. Verse 12 again. For this reason, for this reason, for this reason, for this reason, what God said, because they slept with the fallen angels. For this reason, because they slept with the fallen angels. For this reason, for this reason, for this reason, because they slept with the fallen angels. For this reason, this is the reason. For this reason, I will exterminate the seed of the tribes that dwell or live in the land of your inheritance. And behold, 
thy people Moses shall return to Mount Zion in the Americas. Where is Mount Zion? In the Americas. Which is under the dominion of the Amorites who were installed at the command of Satan when they arrived in this land. Stop. Satan and the fallen angels over here in the Americas. Who did he install? The Amorites. So what that made? The Amorites was the leaders of the other giants. Give me Amos two and nine. These are the giants, and we're going to prove it. Using your Bible. Amos two and nine. These tribes were infected. They slept with the fallen angels and had children. And they were installed in our land. Yet destroyed I the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit from above and his roots from beneath. God went before the children of Israel and destroyed the Amorites. Where? In the Americas. Who else? The Canaanites. Where? In the Americas. The Jebusites. The Perizzites. The Hivites. The Hittites. The Hittites. You got it, Gentile. I pray for you. You got it. I'm going to say them names again and then I'm going to go and I'm going to use the Bible and I'm going to prove that this was our land but they were installed in our land. Did he say Hittite? A land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites and of the Hittites and of the Amorites. Did he say Hittites? Shalom. Mike. Did he say Hittites? Go to Joshua. Go to Joshua. Chapter 1. Verse 1. Now the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness, and this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, and all, and all, and all the land of the Hittites, and all the land of the Hittites, 
and of the land of the Hittites, and of the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast, and unto the great sea, to the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. Where does the sun go down? Where does the sun go down? All of this land is the land of the children of Israel. There is your deed. There is your deed. There is your legal deed given by God. To whose land this is. This land belongs to the children of Israel. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Go back. Now you know that these are the people that slept with the fallen angels. This is why we were forbidden to intermarry with them. Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 23. You are the meat of the earth. All of the homeless. You got a head start. We all about to be homeless. You are a forerunner. You may be helping somebody or teaching somebody how to survive being homeless. That's how bad it's about to get in America. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 7 pay attention thou shalt not abhor an Edomite for he is thy brother thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian because thou was a stranger in his land the children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. Stop. You got to find somewhere else to go, Cam. Now, why did God just say that our ancestors had children with the Egyptians and children with the Edomites? What that mean? They did not sleep with the fallen angels.
Stop right there. They go, yeah. Now let me ask you a question. Why are they out there lying on the streets? Why are they lying? Why are they lying? So right here, we had children with the Edomites and we had children with the Egyptians. So when you go over to the book of Ezra and God tell them to put away them wives and them children. Who were they sleeping with? I'm about to just get up and walk away. I can close the Bible right now. When you go to the book of Ezra, who were they guilty of sleeping with? According to the Bible. According to the Bible. Who are they guilty of sleeping with? The Hittites, the Canaanites, the Parasites, the very ones that God said in Deuteronomy 7, don't marry because they had fallen angel blood. In the book of Ezra, they started marrying them. Once again, it was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Christ had to come through the bloodline. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such as are born of them according to the counsel of my Lord and of those that tremble at the commandment. What commandment? of our God and let it be done according to the law and let it be done according to the law and let it be done according to the law and let it be done according to Deuteronomy chapter 7 let it be done according to the law let it be done according to the law let it be done according to Deuteronomy chapter 7 In Deuteronomy chapter 7, you can put this with Ezra. That's your precept. Now you know who God told us not to marry. And why? But now, guess what? Christ came. God destroyed the seed of these people. Everybody that understood that, put a number 10 in here, please, before I keep going. I'm destroying false doctrine today. Give me everybody that see that, understand that, put a number 10 in here.
Bien-aimé, bien-aimé, Deuteronomy, chapter 7. Same chapter where he told us not to marry these people that mix with the fallen angels. Verse 6, same chapter. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Stop. Now we got to know context. Now we got to know context. Okay. In Deuteronomy 23, we have in children with the Edomites and the Egyptians. Right here, God said he loved us. In the same chapter that he said that these people have mixed their seed with the fallen angels. Same chapter. Over here, he's saying, don't mess, don't marry with the Perizzites, people, Jebusites, people, Hivites, people, Canaanites, people, Girgashites. Don't marry with these people. And then I just showed you. In the sealed book, why? They slept with Anakim and the fallen angels. Then God comes back and says, I love you. You are a holy people. What God said. Okay, in this chapter, you got one group of people whose bloodline has been contaminated by Satan. Then you got another group of people whose bloodline has not yet been contaminated by Satan. Same chapter, one group, oh, I love you, don't marry these other people. They've been contaminated by the fallen angels. Other group, I love you. I chose you. Chose you for what? Use your brain. Where Christ coming from? These people, Satan contaminated them. These people, blood still good. Making sense now? Judah seen a Canaanite woman on the side of the road. Judah decided he was going to sleep with her. He made her his wife, basically, and had two sons, Onan and Ur, whose blood was contaminated. That's why God said they are wicked. God told Judah his sons were wicked because he broke the covenant. He wasn't supposed to have children with the Canaanite woman because their bloodline had been infected by the fallen angels. So God killed Onan and Ur to stop 
that contaminated bloodline from continuing in the earth. Later on, Satan got with the Cain with the e Edomites later on, because that's why King David was ordered to kill all of them. Everywhere you see in your Bible, where God was telling King David, make sure nothing lives, God was using King David to exterminate the seed of Satan. And Satan was using his people to try to exterminate the righteous seed. That's what's going on in your Old Testament. That's why you got a genealogy. That's why you got a genealogy. God is showing you the, the bloodline has not been contaminated. Even with Rahab, the prostitute. That's why Rahab is part of Jesus Christ's genealogy. <laughs> Nobody likes to talk about that. But Rahab was a prostitute. Shalom. That's why God put Rahab in there. So that we Hebrews don't think so highly of ourselves. Because we can be some proudful people. Oh, I'm a Hebrew. All right. Praise ye the Lord. That's why God put the prostitute in Jesus' genealogy. So that we would not think too high of ourselves and allow Satan to play with our ego. Have you walking around here with people kissing your feet? Have you walking around here when, when, everywhere you go, you got a staff. Everywhere you go, you got fringes. Now Satan done played on your ego. Now you high priest Akhenon. And we can show get lifted up out there in them streets. You can wear what you want at home. When you go out there, you're at the bus stop, standing there with your staff, with all type of fake Jews on it. Satan that got all in your head, all in your ego. Now you somebody that you ain't. You standing out there like you can't go to hell. You gonna go to hell with that stack, with that stick and them crystals on it. You still gonna go to hell because you ain't lining your life up with the word of God. The word of God not gonna line up with you. You gonna line up with the word of God. Plain and simple. You out there, stand out there, you all that bag of 10 chips. Now, God says right here to us, we are a holy people. Right here, this is when you're supposed to say, uh-oh. But you don't. You read this, and you automatically get happy. We the holy people. When I read this the first time, I said, uh-oh. Anytime God called me holy, now I know I got a responsibility. I, I automatically said, uh-oh, what you want from me, God? You set me up. You calling me a holy people. Now I got to live up to this? I didn't say, praise you the Lord. I'm a holy person. No, uh-uh. I was like, uh-oh. It comes a responsibility. What you talking about, Willis? So God chose us. Why did he choose us? Everybody read that and that's it. No, why did he choose you? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. The 
instructions. Somebody say instructions. <laughs> Here come instructions. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, same people he called, he called holy, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do them. For what? To do them. What? Do them. Do, do, do them. That you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord thy God of thy fathers giveth thee. Stop. Stop. Brothers and sisters, what do we have to do first before we got the land? You got Negroes all on TikTok teaching against the law. What you had to do before you went in the land? These Nick, excuse my friend, these Negroes, these are the dirty Negroes. These are Negroes on TikTok, they think they gonna go and get the land and they gonna be a hoeing. They think they gonna go in the land and they gonna get them three wives. They thinking they're going to go into the land and they're going to be able to live by grace, not by works, lest any man should boast. That's what they thinking. Here we got an example of what you got to do first to get in the land. Boy, there's a lot of Negroes today. You ain't going into the kingdom. This is a type of how you get in the kingdom of God. And you sure in the hell ain't getting in there talking about you saved by grace. You ain't going out here stealing, killing, hating people. Oh, I don't like white people. Put the Bible down then. I don't like black people. Put the Bible down then and walk away and prepare yourself for a living hell. You don't get the whole of Bible in your hand and walk around and teach hate and think that Christ going to let you in the door. You think Christ going to let you in the door? What's wrong with you? Satan got in your head. You teaching something diametrically opposed to the doctrine of Christ and you think Christ going to open up the door? Christ going to say, don't open that damn door. You don't get to go in the kingdom with that spirit in you. You're going to be like, Christ, I was down there on 4th and Apple Tree for 10 years preaching your word. Christ going to say, yeah, I watched you down there on 4th and Apple Tree. I also watched you down there on 7th and Main. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Do you mean to tell me all those 10 years I was praying to you, you never knew me? You mean to tell me all that fasting I did and you didn't know me? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Let's back this up with another precept. Let's go to the Book of Mormon, chapter 3. I mean, 2 Nephi, chapter 1. 2 Nephi, chapter 1. 
and verse 6. Let's see if the 10 tribes got the same instructions given to them. Wherefore, I, Lehi, prophesied according to the workings of the Spirit which is in me, that there should none come into this land, save they shall be brought by the hand of the Lord. Wherefore, this land is consecrated unto him whom he shall bring. And if it so be, that they shall serve him according to the commandment which he given, which he hath given, it shall be a land of liberty unto them. Wherefore, they shall never be brought down into captivity. If so, it shall be because of iniquity. For if iniquity shall abound, cursed shall be the land for their sakes. But unto the righteous, it shall be blessed forever. And behold, it is wisdom that this land should be kept as yet from the knowledge of the other nations. For behold, many nations would overrun the land, that there would be no place for an inheritance. Wherefore, I, Lehi, have obtained the promise that insomuch as those whom the Lord God shall bring out of the land of Jerusalem shall keep his commandments, they shall prosper upon the face of the land, and they shall be kept from all other nations, that they may possess this land unto themselves, if it so be that they shall keep his commandments. They shall be blessed upon the face of this land, and there shall be none to molest them. And there shall be none to molest them. Why is that word in there? Because you're being molested like hell right now. You got P. Diddy out there molesting all kind of people. Molestation on high levels. In order to become famous, you got to get down on your knees and give up the lower chakra, the higher chakra, the ear chakra, the elbow chakra, even under the el or even under your armpit. <laughs> Everybody being molested. You're being molested because you ain't keeping the commandments. Molestation on high levels. Negroes riding Negroes back, looking like backpacks. <laughs> Just make that Negro out of a backpack because he riding your back. <laughs> Fruity, tooty molestations happening everywhere. Grown men, 40 years old, molesting other grown men. Grown men, grown men, molesting grown men. But you want to go into the land, huh? You want to keep the land. You want to go into the land. Well, I got news for you. This is a type of the kingdom of heaven. Nobody going into the kingdom of heaven unless they keeping the law of the gospel. How you like that? How you like that? Nobody coming into this land unless they can keep the commandments. Praise ye the Lord. No racism. You guys, I want to give you a picture of what's coming. No more racism. No more bigotry. 
No more spilling. No more killing. No more contention. Everything that you see happening in the world right now, evil will not exist any longer because the people that's going into that land are going to take the commandments. So we have Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 4, verse 1 and verse 2, tells you that before you go in the land, you got to keep the commandments. Second Nephi, chapter 1, verse 6 to verse 9, tells you that God did not allow anybody to go into the land unless he brought them. So what that made? That made you had to be pleasing to God before God brought you to this land. Doctrines and Covenants 4 and 1, now behold, a marvelous work is about to come forth among the children of men. Therefore, O you that embark in the service of God, see that you serve him with all your heart, might, mind, and strength, that you may stand blameless before God at the last day. Go with media truth. There you go. Even before you follow God or Christ, he told you to count the cost. You're supposed to count the cost. He said, no man that goes to battle. Don't just walk in there. You count the cost. What's up, Charlotte? Count the cost. I counted the cost. 37 years of serving the devil in a game. Versus the love and the peace and the joy that I have now, baby, I wouldn't give this up for nothing. I'm ready to die for this. I'm ready to go to the guillotine for this. You ain't going, what you going to do, send me to heaven? Oh, we're going we gonna to cut your neck off. Hallelujah. When? When do I get to go home? When do I get to go see Christ? When do I get to go see Peter and Paul? You gonna send me to paradise? When you gonna do it? When can you move? Are we gonna do it in a month? Now nah, move the data. Well, we ain't gonna move the data. Move the data. I wanna get out of here. You try to you try to make me believe that living here on this dirty earth with all these mean, wicked people and getting worse every day, that I, you you think I wanna stay here? Then what Satan wants you to believe. Oh, stay here and keep praying mortgage. Oh, stay here. Don't you like that rent? Don't you like all of the GMO food you gotta dodge? Don't, don't, don't you oh, don't you like going to the grocery store now and trying to make sure you ain't buying no human meat? Oh, don't you like, don't you get a kick out of this? Don't you get a kick out of uh going to the grocery store and you don't know if it's if it's if it's genetically modified meat or what the hell it is. You don't you don't you love this? Don't you want to stay here? Look that devil in his eyes and say, "You don't lost your damn mind, devil. We want the hell out of here. The hell wrong with you? We want the hell out of here. Every damn way you go." It's like a vacuum sucking money out your pocket. You get a damn check, it's already spent. Don't you love it? Hell no. That's what the devil got you thinking. This is a good place. This is stressful. The Bible says oppression 
make a wise man mad. Don't you see how to win mad? You're on the channel with a mad, a, a wild man because of this system. People look at you and say, oh, why don't you just talk nice? Shut the hell up. You ain't been through what we've been through. People always got that. Oh, why, why are you angry? Really? After what the black man and the black woman have went through in America, you got the nerve to ask. You been hiding the black Christ since 1492 and it took to 2024 for a white man on the other side of the world to tell the world he was black? And then you want me to just sit around and say, Oh, praise ye the Lord. You hit it. You lie. You're liars. How many years did you stand on that lie? Didn't lose no sleep. They didn't lose no sleep. Push that lie. Just pushed it strong. Stood on it. Ten toes down. And now they don't want to let go of it. But God is doing all of this to show you who really love him and who really don't love him. If, if, if they would have came out and showed pictures of Jesus being Japanese, we still would be serving him. If he came out and he was he was Chinese, we would still serve him. So the question is now, can you still serve him? Can you still serve him? If they would have came out with a picture of him looking like Beetlejuice, could you still serve him? Even if he if he looked like Beetlejuice, could you still serve him? There'd be pictures of Beetlejuice all over America. Black, black little Beetlejuice. Would you serve him then? Some people wouldn't. But it shows you they really don't love God. They don't love God. They only loved him because they thought he was white. Now that you find out, because you don't read your Bible, your Bible ain't never said he was white. Give me Acts 13 and 1. Now they got to go read their damn Bible. And it's cold-blooded because Satan the one gave it to you. And Satan the one took it from you. Everybody on this earth don't realize you fighting the devil and you don't even know it. Now there, we're in the church that was at Antioch. Certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called the same thing the people in America called niggers and Lucius of Cyrene and Menon which had been brought up with Herod. Ain't that something? Paul, nigger. Barnabas, nigga, ain't that something? I guess they forgot to take that out, huh? Or did God hide it from them? They just didn't paint Jesus white. They painted Paul white, but in your Bible, told you he was black. 
painted Barnabas white and now the gig is up the gig is up now Romans are about to sacrifice a cow we love you Romans we know who you are you are the bloodline descendants of the Roman Empire Rome suffered a wound, a deadly wound, and came back as the great European Empire. And out of the great European Empire, which was number seven, came number eight, the United States of America, the Romans. And that's why I don't vote, but I like Trump. At least he tell the truth. He told the world he was a Roman. Why everybody else don't want to claim the Romans? They don't want to claim the Romans. All of the rich, everybody want to be God's chosen people. So now the gig is up. You know, you're going to go over there. You're going to sacrifice. The Romans are going to sacrifice. Give me a scripture where the Romans sacrifice animals. The gig is up. Jesus Christ is the one that did it. Don't you know Satan worked for God? Satan can't do nothing unless God tell him to do it. Jesus told him to do it. Now we got a problem. Because the book of John said, if you deny that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, then you antichrist. Somebody, somebody, please. I know I only operate on God's wisdom. I don't, I, I don't have no wisdom. I'm dumb as a sack of rocks. But somebody put up the word Christian. And let's see if we can find Antichrist in the word Christian. Let's see if the devil has done something that nobody paid attention to. Let's see. Let's see if we can find in the word Christian. Let's see if we can find show you. Do they keep the Sabbath? What that make? Antichrist. Christ said remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. What did Christ say? For you to do as often as you like. Satan gave you Christmas. Christ gave you in symbolism his body, which is the bread, the wine, which represents the blood. Symbolism. This do as often as you like in remembrance of me. So Satan gave you Christmas in remembrance of Christ.
Christianity doesn't do nothing that Jesus said do. Now, I want everybody to be honest. Does the Christian church follow the words of Jesus Christ in red? Yes or no? I'm just opening up your eyes. I was part of it too. So when I was in the Christian church, I asked God, was I serving you? He said, no. It's all paganism. Masked. As if you following Christ. But when you start to actually read the words of Christ, you get put out the church. Everybody put a number five in here. If you got put out the church, put a number five in here. Because you asked the question. You've seen something in the Bible and you asked the pastor. And the pastor told you that that don't mean that. And then you became a troublemaker in the church because you asked the question about what Christ said. Antichrist. Antichrist. It was right in front of your face. You just didn't want to see it. Soon as you went in that red. Soon as you went in that red. Matthew 5, 17. Think not. Soon as you read Matthew 5 17, think not. <laughs> Soon as you read Matthew 5 17, you had to leave the church. But pastor, you said we following Jesus. We are following Jesus. We just don't read the words of Jesus. Well, how am I going to follow Jesus if I don't read the words of Jesus, pastor? Follow me. <laughs> pastor, in order to follow Jesus, I got to read the words of Jesus. Now, not in this church. We only teach the New Testament. But pastor, Jesus is the New Testament. 
He said we don't read the Old Testament. We only read the New Testament. And you won't even let me read the New Testament. You won't even let me read the New Testament. That's why I'm doing it. Most High told me to back up. First, you said we don't read the Old Testament. Just stay in the New Testament. Yeah, Pastor, I'm reading the book of Matthew and Jesus, well, hey, don't read that. That don't mean that. Pastor, you already took away over half of the Bible. Now you're taking away what the red letter writing man said? Everybody go to the back of the seal portion. In the back of the book of the seven seals. Every word that our Christ spoke in Matthew chapter five, six and seven is recorded in the back of the book of the seven seals. And you will cry when you see just how much they took out. When I first went and started reading Matthew chapter 5 in the back of the sealed portion, I cried. Why did I cry? because of the deception that all of my brothers and sisters have been introduced to. That's why today, 99% of everybody that read the book of Matthew, chapter five, six and seven, you don't know what it's saying. They did that on purpose. But since our God, according to Isaiah 29, 10 to 14, Daniel 12 and 4, Revelations 5 and 1, since he gave us back the book of the seven seals, let's see what our king said when he walked the earth. Matthew 5. And seeing the multitude, he went up. You guys, I get excited. My spirit gets excited every time I read the Bible. That's why I'm loud. That's why I'm crazy. Because the Holy Spirit activates me. I'm not, I got the Holy Spirit. I'm not Eeyore. So I get excited when I read the words of Christ. And saying, the multitude, he went up into a mountain to teach. To what? Teach. To what? Teach. What? Teach. Why do I need you, Pastor? I'm going to keep reading and Jesus is about to teach me. And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain to teach unto them the things which the Father had commanded of him. Stop. You guys see that? That's what they took out. You would have 
have more of a reverential respect and love for the Father if they left that in. Jesus said, I didn't come to teach my own doctrine, but the doctrine that was given of me of my Father. He said, this doctrine is not of me. It's not. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain to teach unto them the things which the Father had commanded of him. And when he was set in the place where he would teach the people, he called forth his disciples and they came unto him that they might hear more clearly the things that he would command the people so that so that they could teach these same things unto the people as they had been given the authority to do what so the disciples went up and got closer to Christ to hear what Christ is about to say so that they can teach the same things that Jesus taught. Did Jesus teach prosperity? Did Jesus teach naming and claiming? Did Jesus teach that foolishness that ignorance no so here are disciples next to their leader Christ and after he had presented his disciples before the people he opened his mouth and taught them saying blessed are ye if you shall give heed unto the words of these twelve, who I have chosen from among you to minister unto you, to be your servants, and unto them I have given power that they may baptize you with water. What? Took that out. This Matthew 5 and 2. Is that in your Bible? They took this out. Why? They don't want you to know that Christ taught the disciples according to Mark chapter 16, starting around verse 15, to baptize the people in water they took this out if you repent and believe all the things which I shall give unto you from my father and after that you are baptized with water which is the covenant you should make before God that you shall do the things which I shall command you this day. Stop. Repentance and water baptism is the new covenant. Part of it. They took this out. Behold, I will baptize you with fire and with the Holy Ghost, which shall cause you to know that the things that I shall give unto you are true. Stop. Who is the one that helps you to know that the things that Christ teaches 
are true. See, you got to have the Holy Ghost. Everybody read it. But if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're going to say this ain't real. Jesus ain't real. God don't have a son. Holy Spirit, what shall cause you to know that the things that I give unto you are true? And this fire shall burn within you, giving you a remission of your sins by the peace that you shall find in your soul. For you are poor in spirit and seek for the kingdom of heaven. And it is this kingdom that I shall give unto you this day. Stop. People don't teach this no more either. When you go down to the waters of baptism with a broken heart and a contrite spirit and get baptized for the remission of your sins, it is an outward demonstration by faith of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When you get up, then you begin to keep the commandments. Then you receive the Holy Spirit. Then you enter on earth into the kingdom of God. On earth, on earth, you have a kingdom of Satan. And on earth, spiritually, you have a kingdom of God. Where? On earth. That's why you have to be ye separate and come out from among. That's why those that make themselves a friend of the world makes themselves an enemy of God. Acts chapter 1. After Christ rose, he was saved by many infallible proofs, still preaching for 40 days and 40 nights, preaching the things that concern the kingdom of God. Where? On earth. When Christ comes, he's going to establish what on earth? His kingdom. You're waiting to get in the kingdom when you don't realize spiritually you have been transformed into the kingdom of God on earth. Spiritually. And what's Satan trying to do? Get you out of it. And again, blessed are they that mourn because they seek for more righteousness. Stop. Blessed are they that mourn because they seeking for more righteousness. How many of you guys want to be more righteous? How many of you want to be better than what you already are? How many of you know you can do better than what you're currently doing? This is what they're hiding from you. He said, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. He said, you mourning he said, I know you mourning because you try you want to do better. He said, You blessed. They took this out. 
Oh, man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God just came in here. He know that you're not where you want to be just yet. So you mourning on the inside to God because you want to do better. He said you blessed because you want to do better. And blessed are they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness in meekness and lowliness of heart for they shall be filled with the Holy Ghost who shall teach them all things and blessed are the merciful who love others and extend to them no judgment for what they do. Stop. Highlight that. Boy, I tell you, this is everything Christ said in Matthew 5, 7. And blessed are the merciful who love others and extend to them no judgment for what they do, which is evil. Stop. If somebody do something wrong, you ain't supposed to judge them. They got free agency. Leave them alone. Got to handle it. Got to deal with them. You ain't supposed to be judging them. Oh, they out. They serving God on Monday. And they out there with the devil on Tuesday. That ain't your business. God did not make us overseers and police officers to be all up in other people's lives trying to keep them on the straight and narrow when you, by doing that, you have done something evil. Why we just can't See, that's Christianity. That's still Christianity. You got a right under your free agency to do whatever you want to do without me saying anything about it. It ain't none of my damn business. That's why I sometimes I wish people grew up in a gang like I did. Because in a gang, you learn to mind your own business. You can't call me and say, Brother Smishy did this. That's Well, he, okay, he did what he wanted to do. He used his free agents. Now, he got a deal with the consequences between him and God. That's between him and God. Now, when he get his whooping and he call me and say, my car broke down, then he automatically know it's chastisement time. And blessed are the merciful who love others and extend to them no judgment for what they do, which is evil. For they shall obtain mercy for that which they do, which is evil. Stop. For they shall obtain mercy if they ask God for forgiveness. And if they thinking they being slick, God know they being slick, and he's still going to chastise them. But Hebrews 10, 26 teaches us 
that we should not willfully sin. Because if we go out there and willfully sin, there remaineth no more sacrifice, but of certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation. You supposed to already know you're not supposed to be willfully sinning. You did that when you was in the world. You was a hell-bound, willful sinner. You did it the way you wanted to do it. You ain't supposed to be able to do that no more. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the law, there remain no more sacrifice of sins or for sins. Once again, Hebrews 10, 26, your precept for that is Psalms 119, 142. That truth right there, that knowledge of the truth is a knowledge of the law. Now, how am I going to willfully sin when I've obtained knowledge from the law not to live in fornication? But I go out there and do it anyway. Not to live in adultery. But I go out there and do it anyway. Not to hate my brothers or judge my brothers or my sisters, no matter what color they skin. But I go out there and do it anyway. Now you willfully sinning. You know better. We all know better. But Paul said, I would not have known what sin was, but by the law. Everybody that think they know what Paul taught, they don't know. Everybody that called Paul false, they don't have the Holy Spirit because they can't see the Bible. If you can't see that when that man was on the street called straight, he had a personal visitation from Jesus Christ himself, knocked him to the ground, blinded him, but he was an educated man. He sat at the feet of Galileo, the high priest. Peter said that Paul wrote things that was hard to be understood. But if you want to learn about Paul, you got to have the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit wrote the book of Romans in such a way that if you read it, if five people read the book of Romans, majority of them going to walk away thinking that the law of God is done away. Maybe one or two going to see it. That the only law that was done away was the law of animal sacrifice. You can't live in adultery no more and justify it. You can't live in fornication no more and justify it. You can't be stealing no more and justify it. It was the law of animal sacrifice because the Hebrews were still sacrificing animals. Give me Acts 21 and 20. Paul kept the law. He taught the law. Romans 7 and 1. Brothers and sisters, all you got to do is use common sense. What is Jesus Christ going to judge the earth with? How is he going to determine who is righteous and who not? And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews which there are which believe and they are all zealous of the what? Law. Next verse. We're going to come back to 21 after this. Know you not, brethren, I speak to them that know the law, how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he liveth. If you live in this world, Lawless. Everybody do me a favor. Put a number five in here 
if the way we live, lawless, almost killed us. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that you are not circumcised. See that? They were saying that back then. That Paul was teaching against the law of Moses. The only part of the law of Moses that he was teaching against was animal sacrifice. Just like the rest of the disciples. So when we was in the world, I'm talking to the people that really grew up in the world. Who who almost committed suicide. We was lawless. Lawlessness almost got us killed. So when I came to Christ, he gave me some structure. He gave me some laws <laughs> that changed my life. Now I don't steal no more. Now I don't hate people no more based on the color of their skin. Now I have love. Now I don't want to commit adultery because I know I'll be hurting God. Now I don't want to lie because now I know I will be hurting God. Now I don't want to steal. Now I don't want to kill because now I'm conscious of the fact that I would have sinned against God. So by me knowing the law, it keeps me in right standings with God. It's written on my heart and on my mind. That's how you walk with God. God is keeping the laws in heaven. The earth is supposed to be a reflection of heaven. How do we pray, Jesus? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Do anybody see heaven on earth? Talking about the people and the way they living. Anybody know anybody that's trying to live on earth like they living in heaven? We supposed to be the image of God on earth just like Christ, just like the apostles as it is in heaven. But everybody want to be lawless. And you can't see that lawlessness is the reason for what we have currently occurring in America. You don't blame the church, huh? They taught lawlessness. So why are you mad when women getting abducted? Why are you mad when children getting stolen? You taught them lawlessness. They have no boundaries. They have no structure. They don't know what they're doing is wrong because you taught them the laws are done away with. So now they out there robbing. Now they out there shooting. Now they out there stealing. Now they out there killing. Now they're out there living in fornication. Now the church got infeminine men in the pulpit. They brung it on themselves. But let me open up your mind for just a second. If any pastor of any church that teaches the laws of God are done away 
and he married. And he got a daughter, 15 years old. And you say to him, can my son date your daughter? He's 16. He going to say, no, my daughter not going to date till she get married. And then I'm going to ask him, where you learn that at? He going to say, God. And then I'm going to say, well, that's keeping with the law. And then I'm going to ask him, do you take showers and baths? He's going to say, of course. And I'm going to say, you know that's in the book of Leviticus, that's part of the law? Cleanliness? Is godliness? And then I'm going to say, do your wife wash your clothes? He going to say, of course. And then I'm going to say, do you know that that's part of the law? And that God is the one taught us how to wash our clothes? And then I'm going to say, have you ever slept with a goat, a sheep? And then he's going to say, no, I would never do that. And then I'm going to say, that's part of the law. The reason you don't do that is because you're keeping the law. And then I'm going to say, have you ever slept with your mother? And he's going to say, no, nah, I would never sleep with my mother. Oh, that's nasty. Pastor. You know that's part of the law? And then I'm going to say, Pastor, yeah, you sleep with your daughter? No, I would never do that. That's my baby. And then I'm going to say, Pastor, that's keeping the law. And then I'm going to say, Pastor. Why are you teaching that the laws of God are done away when you actually keep them? This is where we at. They don't understand that all them laws in the book of Leviticus were laws and are laws of morality. How a man and a woman should live their lives clean before God. And they trying to do it. A lot of them doing it. And then they'll tell you that the laws of God are done away. Well, you should be out there living with the goats. You should be out there living like a caveman. Oh, go join Bigfoot. All of those laws are laws of morality. Before that, man didn't know how to live on the earth. He would have been a caveman. And the very thing that built society, you, in your ignorance, is helping destroy it. If that young man that shot that other gang member who was in your church growing up as a young child, if you would have taught him 
God's laws. He would have grown up and just possibly he would have heard thou shall not kill and he wouldn't have killed that other young man. But all his life all he heard was the laws of God are done away. Verse 8, and blessed are all the pure in heart who in righteousness seek to know God and his ways. Stop. Who seek to know God and his ways. Somebody tell me the ways of God. They right here in front of you. They in your hand. They right here in front of you. They in your hand. These are the ways of God. So now I'm reading them and I'm studying them. And now I want to be more like Christ. And Christ is teaching me how to be more like him. So what I'm reading, I'm going to try to apply it to my life. I'm not going to just read it and walk away from it. I'm going to read it and I'm going to try to apply it to my life. I'm going to find something in here that I'm lacking. I'm going to find something in here that I'm not doing. And then I'm going to start trying to do it. I'm going to start asking God to give me strength and help to do it. And one of the greatest and most impossible feats on planet Earth is recorded in John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And then we go one step deeper. Yeah, baby, this is deep. To love your neighbor as yourself virtually impossible in America. Virtually impossible in America for a white man who loved Christ to sit down and have a meal with a white man who loved Christ. Because Satan has divided the body of Christ and the body of Christ don't even realize how divided they are along racial lines. It don't matter what color they are. They were baptized in the same baptism I was baptized in. They received the same spirit that I received. They've been given the same commandments that I've been given. They are my brothers and my sisters of my blood. As one born among the nation. And for all you young Negroes, these older Negroes need to teach you how our mamas were. They need to teach you the love that came from our mothers. Mama didn't sit back and say when she was cooking that big old dinner, get them army pots, little white child, little Mexican child came over to the house. Mama put them to the table, made them eat. We're going to be one in the eyes of Christ 
black, white, Japanese, Chinese, all got the same thing in common. We all trying to make it into the kingdom of God. We don't want to go to hell. So I'm going to love my brother. I'm going to love my sister in spite of this world, in spite of what Satan has been doing to us. And a short little testimony. 20 years ago, when the father had me running my own ministry, I used to say, I used to prophesy that one day I'm going to see the Chinese man, I'm going to see the Japanese man, I'm going to see the black man, I'm going to see the white man, I'm going to see the Arab man, all in the same place worshiping the same God and loving one another and respecting one another and having compassion for one another and look out for each other as family. That day will occur when Christ returns. So pray to God for the fruit of the Spirit because the very first fruit is love in Galatians 5 and 22. That love, that agape love, will help you to become more like Christ. It will help you become more like the disciples. And blessed are all the pure in heart who in righteousness seek to know God and his ways, that they might understand truth and not to consume it upon their lusts as they do. They who are impure, behold, they shall know God. And blessed are the peacemakers who contend with no man over doctrine. Yea, these shall come to know the true doctrine, and then they shall be called the children of God. Stop. See what he really said? He said, blessed is the man that does not contend with other men about doctrine. And blessed are they which are persecuted and mocked by others because of their righteous works. For they shall find their peace and happiness in the kingdom of heaven. I need to read that again. And blessed are they who are persecuted and mocked by others because of their righteous works. For they shall find their peace and happiness in the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you that are mocked by your family and friends for your righteous works. You need to hear that, Zen? Blessed are you You bless Charlotte Always know that When you wake up You write where God wants you to be at the right time in history.
You hear me, little friends? Every one of you are right where God wants you to be at the right time in history. And if you find yourself lacking in any of the fruits of the Spirit, you need to ask God to increase it. If I wake up and I find that I'm lacking in love, I ask God to give me more love. If I find out I'm lacking in long suffering, I'll ask God, I need a little more long suffering. I read Psalms 1 that we're supposed to be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water so that I can bring forth my fruit in due season. That tree represents you. To be planted by the rivers of the water is to be planted by the Spirit of God so that I can bring forth more fruit. Christ said we are supposed to bear fruit. He said, every branch in me that beareth not fruit is this good for nothing to be cast out into the fire. So it's our job to bear fruit. Look inside of yourself. Look at Galatians 5.22 and identify what you lacking. Identify what you need more of. And he says, ask God and he will give it to you. But whatever we do, we cannot remain the same. When you look at when you first started serving Christ, there should have been some growth in your life. There's no way you should still be the same person that you were when you first met Christ. If you notice that you're not growing, it's because of something you do. I don't want to be in the same place today that I was a year ago. In my mind, I can do better. I'm not satisfied with where I am right now. I want to be closer to God. I want to be able to call on God just like Moses did. I want God glory to fill the temple. I want angels to be able to walk in my presence because I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. I'm dotting my eyes and I'm crossing my teeth. going through the fire, I used to say, 
to the devil. I used to say, devil, I might not be just yet where I want to be. But I'm sure not where I used to be. Sometimes I say to myself, some of God's children never had nobody to say a prayer for them. Think about that. You might run across somebody today that never had a prayer prayed for them. So pray for them. It might just be your prayer that changed their life. It might just be your prayer that give them strength. No more judging people. Pray for people. We're running out of time. We're running out of time. We write. We write at Seal Portion 70. This is what we've been waiting on, Pinky. Russia has declared that the UK and the United States of America 
was behind the terrorist attack. We hear it, Jasmine. And they vowed revenge. And because I know prophecy, I was waiting what was going to cause the ten nations to hate the whore. I was waiting to see what incident was going to happen because I knew something had to happen for God to get his will fulfilled. Innocent people. Innocent. They went up before God. And because of the way they were killed. They was given a chance. Don't ever think that Satan is going to win. Innocent people all over the world, all nationalities. I like to remind the world that in the 14th century it all began with us. It began with us. World War One. World War II, Vietnam War, Iraqi War, Satan, having brother, kill brother. You know what Satan is a master at? You have He'll, he, he'll have we so sleep. He'll have black gang members killing black gang members. Family. He'll have Mexican gang members killing Mexican gang members. Family. Do you know why they don't know they family? Because Satan gave him a last name. So now, here he is again. Brother against brother. Here he is again. And all of my European brothers and sisters in America. Satan. Because of last names and languages and where you may live. You don't even realize Europeans Killing Europeans. He's taught you to see the language barrier. He's taught you to see names. The Russians. No, my friend. They're your family. They're Europeans. 
from a different tribe, but they're still your family. Killing brother. And they've been so deceived that they don't even realize that they're all Europeans. The same game he plays on the people of the earth. Sunni versus Shia. You are family. But I want you to say what religion does. Brother, killing brother and Satan is the one got you killing each other all of the Europeans in America you came from Europe have you forgotten that your ancestors once lived in Europe That makes the Russians your family? That makes the Ukrainians your family? That makes the Poles your family? They're just from different tribes, but they're Europeans. They're your family. And you justify the extermination of your own family because of a name called Russian or because they live where you once lived. Have you been in America too long? Has America made you believe that this is your homeland? No, my friend, you're all Europeans and Satan right now has you killing each other. Just like black on black crime, Satan has us killing each other because you got on blue and you got on red. Brother killing brother. Because you're ignorant of the fact that we did not have last names. Satan gave you last names. We all come from tribes. Even the Europeans come from tribes. They gave us these last names to separate us. So today, a black family can have a family reunion and their last names are Jones. And then here come the same family whose last name is Smith to enjoy the family reunion with the Joneses. And they haven't even figured out they're the same family that was given names in the 1600s by your slave masters to psychologically separate you. So today, you say things like, he looked just like my uncle because I'm related to your uncle. Or she looked just like 
my cousin because she is related to you. That's why we don't do it no more. But the family reunion was to introduce the family to one another so that we don't intermarry. Mama and them. The reason for the family reunion was so that we do not marry our first cousins or our aunties. So don't let these last names because when you read your Bible Jacob didn't have a last name Joseph didn't have a last name Judah didn't have a last name Ephraim didn't have a last name Asher didn't have a last name Dan didn't have a last name Gad didn't have a last name So Satan in order to divide and conquer gave us all last names. This even go for the Europeans. Got the North Koreans at the throat of the South Koreans. Take off the North and take off the South. They are brothers and sisters. But in order for Satan to destroy us Oh, he got brother killing brother because they no longer know that they brothers and sisters. If I ask any European today, where your ancestors from? Oh, we from Scotland. We from some place in Europe. Stop allowing Satan to use names to divide us. And his greatest weapon was the creation of black people. I'm brown and my people are brown. And white people. What a mighty game he's played in America. And then you wonder why our enemies? Oh, we have enemies. Walk on a black and white checker flow. And you haven't figured it out yet. They're walking on a black and white checkered flow. And every so often, to keep these ignorant whites 
and these ignorant blacks ignorant. We got to have a display on national television of a white man killing a black man so that we can continue to rape, rob, and pillage still their children, white and black. Abduct their women, white and black. But in order for us to do this, we must keep the ignorant whites and the ignorant blacks hating one another. And while they constantly looking at one another, they won't even realize that we have stolen everything that belongs to them. They haven't even realized they in the same pot, paying the same gas prices, paying the same high food prices. They haven't even figured it out they in the same pot being oppressed by the oppressors. But just keep them looking at one another. Satan Revelations 12, 9. He has deceived the whole world. Brothers killing brothers. It saddens my heart because the Bible says which what much wisdom comes much sorrow. What I see I see the children of Satan destroying the children of God. I see the sons of darkness at war with the sons of light. Has nothing to do with skin color. yourself in God's shoes and look down from heaven at the earth right now. Look down from heaven in your mind at the earth and ask yourself how does our father feel? Look down. And 
can see your children killing each other. Your children on pills on the street corners. Homeless, in prisons. Just look down and see what our Father sees. He's hurting. He's hurting. He's hurting. So I'm going to say today. try to see this world like God sees it. His children His children hating each other disrespecting each other, killing each other. Christ said, just like in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Now that you see what the Father sees. It's going to make you pray more. We were sent this earth to save sinners just like Christ. So our job to bring God's children back home to him anybody out there that needs water baptism if there's anybody out there that are living in an area where we don't have the ability to get somebody there to baptize you baptize yourself go find Somewhere where you can go down to the water yourself. Ask God to forgive you of the sins of your forefathers and to forgive you of your sins. Go completely down under the water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost and come back up out of the water. And Christ will meet you right there where you are. We send out the love of God to all of our brothers and sisters 
white, so-called black, so-called yellow, so-called green, so-called, and oh yeah, our tangerine colored brothers and sisters. We love you all because God has put that love in us to be right representatives for him on earth. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Welcome. You are here not by chance, but because of God. I don't brag and I don't boast, but I am God's last prophet. I'm the one that all these books talk about. Again, I don't brag and I don't boast. I was sent to gather God's elect and the next thing that's going to happen is going to be this five month war where we're all going to be cut off and not be able to talk to each other or communicate with each other but know this that when the war starts your redemption draweth nigh War starts, your redemption draweth nigh. Christ said he's going to cut it short in righteousness. That means that because you guys are living right, following Christ. He's going to cut the five-month war short. He's going to shorten the time for the elect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, somebody got to do it to save other people. Somebody got to sell out. Cut this thing short in righteousness. Keep praying for one another. Keep loving each other. We don't hate nobody. We we send love out to our Jewish brothers. our Arab brothers. We don't hate nobody. That's a work of the flesh in Galatians 5 and 19. And we don't walk in the flesh. We walk in the spirit. Welcome to God's channel. Everybody is welcome. Christ have his arms out all the day long. Say, come, come, come to me. It won't cost you nothing. It's free. He already did it. He paid the price when he laid down his life. No man 
took it from him. But he laid it down. All you got to do is follow the Holy Spirit. Much love, much respect. Somebody got to work for God the right way. the spirit of division. We rebuke the spirit of racism. We rebuke the spirit of hate. And we pray the spirit of love, the spirit of joy, the spirit of respect and compassion for all mankind. Until next time, keep praying. Your prayers will make a difference. All right, pure tribe. Give me cell potion, 35 and 9. 35 and 9, I heard. This verse is for all of you. And this work shall be a marvelous work and a wonder. And it shall mark the start of the gathering of the elect, even that God might gather them unto himself, that they may not be tormented and destroyed at the final coming of his son, even Jesus Christ. That's why we're here, to gather the elect of God. Peace, King Anab. That's why we're here. There are angels working with us to gather God's elect. You, if you are on this channel, you are one of God's elect. Sixty-eight, fifty-eight, for the new people. shall begin to prepare him to bring forth unto you this record, which shall be the marvelous work and wonder that the Father had prepared for you. It's my job to bring forth unto you the seal portion, the seal book, doctrines and covenants. It's all recorded in the seal portion. It's a conglomerate of all those books in one. We got our camera back. I want to thank Google. I want to thank C 
CIA, Mossad, Saudi intelligence. Thank you. They wanted to have access to my camera and my microphone. That's why my camera wasn't working the other day. So I had to click and give them approval. Though they are already on here, I pray they learning something. That we're at the end of time. Everybody on this earth got a job to do. You either working for God or are you working for the devil. But you working for somebody. <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> and when Christ comes, he'll let you know who employed you. He'll let you know who you was working for. I want to let the brothers on the land know somebody can come and get the tower and take it back to the church. Anytime. It ain't got to be today. Somebody can come and get the tower, the computer tower, and take it back to the church. I don't need it now. What are they, oh, so they stealing? They stealing from me? They putting commercials. All right, you tell you guys breaking the law. You guys breaking the law. There's no monetization on my channel. So if you put commercials on my lessons, all right, Eduardo, Brazilian, much, much praise. Jesus Christ the King, you speak Spanish? Hold on a minute. Say, what's up, Brazil? All praise to the king. All praise to the king from Cleveland, Ohio. We got Bishop Gabar in Ohio, we got brothers and sisters in Ohio. ask everybody to do that come to this channel just be respectful a lot of people in America forgot what mama taught them and that's how to be respectful you don't speak English very well all right would you speak Spanish you speak Spanish I'm going to do something just for you. I'm going to do something just for you. Hold on a minute. Speak Spanish. 
speak Spanish. Hold on, I got a song for you. Let me see if I can find it. On our other channel, we have Luna that put the scriptures up in Spanish. On our other channel. Well, Negro's eyes is Right in my face, it'll bite me like a snake. Any questions? This for my Brazilian brother. Somebody give him access to this song.
en el nombre de Jesús Cristo. En el nombre de Jesús Cristo. He's saying about Christ. Come on out here. We don't mess around over here. Don't get me going, man. I won't get off here. I'll be on here. I'll be on here all night. I got to get out of here. Come out here. You like that song? How about this one? We're going to share some music with you guys. We're going to share some music with you guys so you can play it at home. When I rap about my sins, it's just a cry for help. I know God forgives, so why can't I forgive myself? I'm still question purpose, cause I still be trying to find myself. Be overthinking to the point where it declined my health. I'm stuck in my rejection. I feel so many attachments. But I had to put all that to sleep. But I know it's my music I be listening to when I be driving my car. Won't see nobody laughing when Jesus come back to snatch us. Every day I'm tested and fearful if I'm gonna pass it. We all, all up in the car crying, Holy Spirit, all up in the truck. Battle, I hold as I start relaxing. When I reach a new level, the devil send a new distraction. Oh. And Jesus said a prophet not heard in his hometown. That's probably the reason that all my people keep me down. I can't even change without my family talking about me. Moved out of my city, all my people do is doubt me. Doubt me. It is not like you, Lord. There is not like you, Lord. Those are sins that you bore. Sing it! Or crumble upon. Sing it! It is not like you. Put in the works of the message, be shining. I got your back, so I know you got mine. And I would die for 
for you. You in there through the highs and the lows, and you in there when we had nothing to show. This is my heart and this is my soul. We are trying to find some truth, oh yeah. And I'm here on this. The spirit it of Elijah, home. baby. Yeah. Listen, I would die for you. Listen, I would live out my whole life for you. Been reflecting on all that I've been through. Now I know that I would die for you. Oh, hell to the king. Listen, I would die for you. This way you gotta get your mind with God in Christ. Not to be wretched, but to die for Christ. Now remember all those nights. Stars up in the temple sky. Praying somehow this would work. Cause I knew that we could change. Hear me talking! There's no mountain you can move. You've seen everything that I what? do. And when it's over, it's just me. Ready to die for this. Listen, I would die for you. Listen, I would live out my whole life for you. To the king! Reflecting on all that I've been through. Now I know that I would die for you. Die for you. Listen, I would die for you. Listen, I would live out my whole life. Come on out here. We ain't in this plan, no game. We ain't ready to be raptured. We ready to die for what we believe in. And we ain't talking about fighting nobody. We ain't got to go out there and die in the world. They're going to kill us. Hello. For what we stand for. Love. Compassion. Charity. That's why they mad at you. I ready to die for the devil in the gang for 37 years. Been shot, stabbed, damn near run over a bunch of times. If I'm ready to die for the gang, damn right, I'm ready to die for Christ until the wheels fall off. Until the wheels fall off.
stay away. As we battle against the lake, pick up your sword, pick up your shield, put on your plate. Yeah. As we battle against the lake, put on your shoes, yeah. tighten your belt, yeah. guard your face. Yeah. As we battle against the lake, pick up your sword, yeah. pick up your shield, yeah. put on your plate. Yeah. As we battle against the lake, put on your shoes, yeah. tighten your belt, yeah. guard your face. Yeah. As we battle against the lake, you're under attack by all of these wicked beings. The fallen the like king who forfeited their wings. So who would take the job? The job they cannot stand. The devil told me, boy, he's having his last dance. But I don't dance. I blow my yard hook. My soul was asleep. The most high shook me. Lost on the road, this is where the road took me. See, I make a right adversary try to push me. Back to the left, but not protecting my breast. Every day is the battle. We fight to the last breath. We got to choose life and not that eternal death. Take off the belt of troops and wrap it around his neck. I testify and confess. I'm hoping you get the truth. I pray the Kelvin is dead, so you know me by my truth. I pray that my father's proud. I pray that keep his commands. I know that y'all got a plan. I pray that he let me in. Pick up the sword. Pick up the shield. Put on your plate, yeah. As we battle against the lake, put on your shoes, yeah. Tighten your belt, yeah. Guard your face, yeah. As we battle against the lake, pick up the sword, yeah. Pick up the shield, yeah. Put on your plate, yeah. As we battle against the lake, put on your shoes, yeah. Tighten your belt, yeah. Guard your face, yeah. As we battle against the lake, here with you, boy. Take my place. But only by the world can you give me death. We got our trust, and we got our trust. I think I got it Do my best to follow when you hold you with death. I got a couple things that we need to regret. When the tribulations take that trial as a test. I'm talking to myself too, that's why I said we. So we can compromise like our brothers are weak. We can't see past the trees if we're smoking that weed. Full of that drink, but with the right may be. Is it that deep, but with the right that cheap? Be up a good chef, but don't keep that sheep. In love with the wolf, that we care to see. Say your face wrong, or it's going to be weak. Grab to the ground, don't match them teeth. Put your arm around, tighten up the sneak. Better go. Pick up the sword, pick up the shield, put on your plate. Yeah. As we battle against the lake, put on your shoes. Yeah. Tighten your belt, yeah. guard your face. Yeah. As we battle against the lake, pick up the sword, pick up the shield, yeah. put on your plate. Yeah. As we battle against the lake, put on your shoes. Yeah. Tighten your belt, yeah. guard your face. Yeah. As we battle against the lake, put on the music video. You boy, yourself. Stop following the crowd, make a choice for yourself. Pick me up and now I run to you. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. 
get your music and you gotta you gotta when you ain't studying you gotta have your music playing i be bumping i don't mess around Lord, i know you see us when we are in need as i love to discover every picture in front of me i did things wrong but still you saved me i am who i am but still you make I know you see us when we are in need. As I look to the sky, my redemption in front of me. I did things wrong, but still you saved me. I am who I am, but still you're making me. Still making me. No, still you're making me. No, still you're making me. No, still you're making me. I am who I am, but still you're making me. Like in my head, maybe. Always complain about the things that we say. Instead of praying and moving out the way, we can not talk to God, but still go our own way. But I ain't tripping. Now look at how I'm living. With just a stone up his praise, I'm getting blessed every minute. If you're living right now, thank God, because he's the reason that you're breathing. And your limbs say, ah. Oh. For me being me, I may not have what I want, but have what I need. Been through a lot of pain and caused a lot of suffering. That I am is still making me, but first he had to break me. Who we love, he changes every time. Say in private, grab me, God say he's not the one. I am because of him, so I don't live for fun. I live for the one. Lord, I 
know you see us when we are in need. As I look to the sky, my redemption in front of me. I did things wrong, but still you saved me. I am who I am, but still you make it me. Yeah, still you make it me. Yeah, still you make it me. On my channel. Baby. 
If you really serving God, baby, you're going to fight. You're going to have some ups and some downs. You're going to have some ups and some downs. From the tribes of Israel. And I'm going to leave you with this one. I'm going to leave you with this one. This is the truth. Is there anybody out there, anybody out there that want to hear the truth? Is there anybody out there, anybody out there that want to hear the truth? From the beginning, high school, the history wasn't true. And they lied again, said Jesus was a white man too. We are the Jews, we are the Jews. See, they stole our nationality. We are the Jews. We are the Jews. We are the Jews. And we're going to show this world how to love, how to respect. And how to have compassion for one another. We're going to be a light for Christ to the rest of the world. That's what we're going to be. It's all good, Louis. We're going to bang out here tomorrow. We're going to bang out of this one tomorrow. We're going to bang out the seal book tomorrow. That's what we're going to do tomorrow. We're going to bang out that seal portion tomorrow. We're going to bang out of here tomorrow. We're going to get some more dollars. 9.30, baby. The Lord says the same. We working in the vineyard. I'm in the vineyard. I'm in the vineyard, baby. Got this, I got this sense of urgency that I got to do every day this week. I'm going to be here Sunday. says as you see that day approaching assemble yourself and so much the more
said, don't cast your pearls before the swine. Stop trying to make people see what only you can see. If people don't want to hear it, you can't force it down their throat. When I'm out there in the world, I don't share. I don't run around trying to share. You're going to have to come to me and ask me a question. You're going to have to open up the door before I minister to you. I ain't, I ain't wasting my time. I ain't casting my pearls before the swine. And that's what that means. You out there trying to preach to people that don't want to hear it. And then you get upset. Then you get upset.
But behold, Zion, the city whose foundation proceeded from heaven and expected by all the prophets that live before us shall not come until the words of this book fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. Stop. What? What is that? Zion shall not what? Come until what? Until what? I want you guys to see that you are part of prophecy. You are part of prophecy. Let me read that again. You got to know who you are. This ain't for everybody. But behold, Zion, the city whose foundations proceeded from heaven and expected by all the prophets that live before us shall not come until the words of this book fulfill the prophecies of Isaiah. When these, when then these seals are opened and these words are revealed to the son of man and by the remnant of Jacob, the Lord God, will show in union with the seed of the promise and to everyone who will be called by his name in the fullness of times. We know that the fullness of times began in 2019 for us. Because this record didn't come until the fullness of times. And thus prophesied Isaiah concerning these days and the chosen seed through the covenant made with their ancestors. Behold, the former things already fulfilled. And behold, now. I am announcing unto you new things, and before they occur, I reveal them to you. If you look back up at the top when it said, until the words of the prophecies of Isaiah shall be fulfilled. What prophecy? Isaiah 29, 10 to 14. I reveal them to you, no things, and before they occur, I will reveal them to you. From the east, I will bring his offspring, and in the west, I will gather him. I'll, I'll tell the north, deliver them, and to the south, do not hold, hold bring my children from afar and my judgment and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name and gathered in Zion and no Jerusalem. And behold, I will bring forth from them a people who are blind, though they have eyes and who are deaf though they have ears, and I will drive them away because they refuse to seek salvation from me, the Lord, while I gather all the nations into one place. Who among them can announce this and reveal to us the ancient things written in this book? May he present his witness to prove 
that he is right so that my people will hear them and say, this is true. Therefore, it must be fulfilled in this, that Isaiah's words concerning him, who with stammering lips, stuttering lips, and another tongue will speak to this people, just as it was prophesied by Joseph in Egypt, concerning him, whom the Lord will call to write these words, but that he will not be able to speak to these people because of his dialect, but that the Lord would summon to minister with him a spokesman from the loins of Joseph, according to the promise made to our ancestors in relation to the chosen seed in the last days. In these days, there will be a transformation of the people among whom there will be a pure tongue. For each man and woman will invoke the name of the Lord in their hearts so that the love is the feeling shared by both parties whether it is between two persons or two groups, or even between different cities. For wherever you're the people are gathered, there will be the same feelings among brothers. This project coming from God requires first that the people possess the citizenship of Zion in their hearts. And this will be the means by which the people of God will show themselves apt and worthy to live in Zion, having a broken heart and a contrite spirit before the Lord. Stop right there. It's going to be love that bring us together. along with the laws of God. That's what's bringing us together. Love is the highest frequency in the universe. read all about the second coming of Christ. It's going to be a dreadful day, but that's love. He's coming to set free the captives. Just like in ancient Egypt. He's coming to set you free, baby. No more work. I'm ready to. Much love. Much respect. Pray ye one for another. Shalom, family.